How did the DOJ find out you had this video? My money is on an employee in the tech company that did the decryption for us. Not that it matters at this point. It matters to me. Maybe you should have been the one to tell them. Is the government aware that this footage is from Operation Omega? It seems that way. What's unclear is whether they know the SEAL team botched the mission. So this could come as a shock to the powers that be. Or a leak in a cover-up that began two years ago. You think the Navy spun the story that went public? As opposed to an honest mistake? That sounds pretty cynical, Peter. Weapons of mass destruction. Iran-Contra, the Gulf of Tonkin. Those names should be a warning to you. You've stepped into something way bigger than your pay grade. I do like to hear the truth from my public officials. But I don't have an ax to grind here. Really? Because I see sparks flying. I just want to be able to prove my murder case. You're litigating against the Justice Department in federal court. If your murder case hangs on this video, lots of luck. Thanks for the pep talk, boss. We're here to talk about Chicago justice. Uh, hello. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I, I'm loving this show. I mean, obviously, we're big fans here. We already had uh, Philip Winchester and Carl Weathers, your co-stars here, who are so great. Um, you know, being a part of this Dick Wolf franchise, the, the Chicago Fires, the Chicago PDs, what did that mean to you, and, and what was it like getting this role? I mean, it was such an honor. I grew up a fan of Law & Order, um, so I'm a huge fan of, like, Jill Hennessy and Angie Harmon, and I just, to play a second chair uh, in a Dick Wolf law show is like a dream come true. Um, so, so that was really exciting, not to mention the Chicago shows are being done so well and all the actors are so talented and there were some big shoes to fill coming into this you know, family franchise, but everyone's so welcoming and just so great. I, can't, I couldn't be luckier. Did you know all the people attached to it while you were doing the audition, while you're getting the show? Um, I, yeah, I knew, I, I, I knew everyone who had been in the original sort of spin-off um, backdoor pilot. Um, I knew that all of them were involved. Uh, I, I assumed that Philip Winchester was a much more serious person than he is in real life because of, you know, Peter Stone. Um, um, so it was a treat to meet him, and, and, and also Carl Weathers is just a dream. I mean, you can't say enough nice things about all of them. Joel and John, I hope you get to meet them. They're, yeah. they're sweethearts. They really are. It's a great cast. And so did, how did you yeah. guys all bond? Do you guys get to bond in Chicago where you guys actually film it? Um, yeah. So I found out about a week before I had to move out. Um, so there was no time to bond prior to that. And I got there and uh, I met Joel at a meeting. And then um, we all got together and had dinner that night. And uh, and John Seda, one of the first weekends there, he invited everybody from all the shows over to his place and uh, just to have everyone meet. And um, it, was, it was such a treat. They're just really genuine people, which is great to say about really talented actors, you know. So I'm really fortunate. I mean, it must be a surreal moment you know, when you were starting out and you actually stayed here in New York City when you were first coming up, right? So can you tell us a little bit about how you found acting and started? Yes, I went to a little school. That's behind us, uh, sort of. Um, we have some uh, NYU kids around here. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Cool. Um, uh, great school. Uh, I actually was a dance major in Tisch. Um, and I, I wanted to act, but I was, uh, I was shy about it um, and wasn't sure how to make that change in my life. I'd been doing dance for my entire life, very seriously. Um, so... It was actually after I graduated. I took some classes, you know, I tried to take some electives within Tisch, and uh, we had some required acting classes within the dance program, just like the actors have to dance. Um, I don't know what majors you guys may or may not have. Um, but uh, yeah, so it really started after I graduated. I moved back to San Francisco and started getting training and, and doing student films and things like that. And, here we are. When was the first role where your family was like, oh, okay, you're like a legit actress? <laughs> um, you know, I think, they, I, I think they were all excited when I was starting to do short films and stuff because, because it felt really significant to me and they recognized that that was important to me and also um, how much drive I had when I, you know, 
first one at it, um, submitting myself with no agent and in a completely different town and, you know, like with somewhat of a resume, but like just fighting for my own. I think they were really impressed with that. Um, but I think probably my extended family and, and maybe family friends believed it was more legitimate when I first worked on Unreal. Yeah. Or, Such a uh, great know. show. I'm not sure if people watched Unreal, but yeah, it was so fantastic. <laughs> yeah, it's a fun show. What was it like getting that role? And you know, what kind of uh, were you familiar with the Bachelor franchises when you were uh, getting it? Um, you know, I was familiar with them, but I never watched them myself. I'm not a reality TV person. I'm, I say this genuinely. I am a legal show fan through and through. Um, so it was it was very different. It was a learning experience. Um, and, and it was really fun to learn about that world, and, and the creator actually worked on The Bachelor, so um, it, it, there's a lot of truth to you know her experiences and all of that, so that was great to learn about the behind the scenes of it. Um, uh, but yeah, I'm just so pleased to be on a show that I would watch too. I mean, not that I watched Unreal for sure, and it was it's actually it's it's a really good show. You know, it's it's. It's one that surprises you, especially if you're not a fan of reality television. It's it's really smart and good, um, uh, but it's fun. You know, it's it's nice to be on this one. There was so much great physical comedy on Unreal. You actually had a pool, you know, crazy yes. pool sink. Can you tell us a little bit about that? That was insane. That was my first day on set, actually, and it was about it was like 20 degrees, full on bikini. Had to drown. In, in the pool, and uh, BJ Britt, who played uh, Darius Beck, it's all coming back to me, um, uh, had to come come catch me, and uh, it was just, it was a mess. Luckily, we only had to do it in, in two takes, but it was cold and terrifying and just, <laughs> it was a mess. <laughs> Sounds like a bit of a bonding experience for all the guys that were a part of that show. Oh, yeah, all the, you know, I'm actually going to go see... Uh, Danae Benton's show tonight. Um, she played Ruby on Unreal, and she's in Great Comet on Broadway. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, we've all stayed friends and stayed in touch. And um, they're just really, I've been really lucky to have met only really incredible people in my life. You know, you hear stories about actors, and, and um, I'm, I, I've just really lucked out with some phenomenal people. Yeah, I mean, you know, Chicago Justice, these scripts are so good. I mean, they feel like they're pulled from the headlines. I mean, is there, like, a discussion with the writers as far as your character and how it develops? Um, yeah, yeah. So, you know, they really wanted... Uh, first of all, yes, the writers are incredible. We've got a, a number of writers who actually wrote on Law & Order, and um, they were lawyers themselves before that. So they've got a lot, of, they've got loads of knowledge in that department. Um, and then we also have a number of sort of newer writers. So it's kind of a mentorship, a bit like our, you know, first chair, second chair, you know, like any mentorship, I guess. Um, and, uh, and they all talk about what a great learning experience it is because our showrunner, Michael Chinuchin, you know, rather than just like fixing it himself, he'll explain you know, how to do something. He's really teaching. He's not just giving the answers and, like, making it easier on himself. You know, he's he's really teaching them to do their best work, and, and I've talked to some of those writers, and they're just really happy with that whole process. Um, uh, but, yeah, as far as Anna Valdez goes, she is... She's... Her, the character description is whip smart, so you know, glad they're writing it for me, and uh, and and they're writing her really well. She stands up for herself. I'm really lucky to play a female who has opinions, and sometimes she's the one in the room who is right, and um, I honestly didn't expect that. And and you, it's, I think I'm really happy to be an actress in this time because I don't, we don't just have to settle for you know, damsel in distress, um, or, you know, smart woman who nobody likes, or anything like that, you know, like, I, I'm really lucky the way she's written, even as sort of the up-and-comer, maybe the one who doesn't 
have as much information as Stone or as, as Jeffrey's played by the amazing Carl Weathers. They're looking at you so ominously. I know, they're staring right at me. Oh my gosh. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, so I'm just, I, they, it's, it's pretty great to be written, to, to be given writing that is so intelligent. Yeah, and you talked about that mentorship. I mean, is there any kernels of wisdom that, you know, Philip or Carl have passed down to you while you guys are filming? Oh, for sure. Um, yeah, because as much as it is sort of a mentorship on the show, it really is that in real life, too, because I can ask them questions because, you know, they've both been working a lot longer than I am. I have been. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of some good... Some good advice. Um, they've both settled my nerves a lot with um, with interviews, actually, because I have a harder time speaking for myself than I do as a different character. You're doing very well here. Thank you. No, that's not. That's not. I'm not asking for compliments. Um, oh man, that was fishing, wasn't it? No. Uh, uh, but you know, sometimes to a degree, you are playing a character when you do do interviews. Um, but I appreciate that uh, they both do such a great job at, at being themselves and also, you know, maintaining composure. I think it's, it's, a, it's a hard thing to do. So I've been lucky to have watched them in that. And also, um, I mean, just watching them act in, in the, the courtroom not just Philip Winchester. I mean, he's incredible in the courtroom. It's like a master class. Um, but the guest stars that we've had come in are just phenomenal. You know, I get asked, like, if you could pick any guest star, like, who would you have come in? And I have to, I have to say, like, first of all, there are a thousand actors I would pick, but also people who I've never, wh whose work I've never seen come in and just blow us away. Or, or who have only done theater, maybe, and haven't actually done a film project or TV or anything like that have just like, just we've, you know, like complete silence after cut because we're all just blown away by the performance we've seen. Um, so I'm so lucky at this stage in my career to be able to witness that and watch that in, in process. So it's nice. And what does the Chicago Justice crew do when you're on your downtime? What is there to do in Chicago that you guys can uh, mix up in? I wish I could say we had a, a little more downtime. <laughs> um, let's see. Well, you know, it's nice because they all, uh, most of them have their families there and everything. So I've gotten to meet, like, their, you know, daughters and sons and family. And, and that's been a treat. Um, uh, you know, I... I really enjoyed the improv community in uh, LA and um, have some friends in Chicago who are a part of that world. So I got to see, you know, some of their shows and interact in that world a bit. Um, it's nice because they have like 10 p.m. shows. So when you get off work at nine, you can like actually make the show as opposed to like getting theater tickets and you're like, oh, there's no way we'll be off at 6.30. Great. Yeah. Friday night. <laughs> so. It's a good breakup of the seriousness of the, of the show. Yes, that too. Yeah. Well, that, and that's kind of the brilliant thing is that all these actors are so funny. Mm -hmm. We have, like, I mean, I would just, I think every single one of the actors is, is also 100% capable of doing a sort of, like, comedic version, mm -hmm. satire, whatever, of the same show. Mm -hmm. Like, everyone is capable of doing, like, a Brooklyn Nine-Nine kind of thing yeah. of our shows. So it's, it's, it's really fun. It, it never gets too serious on set, um, which sometimes it's important to be that way. Um, but uh, it's nice to loosen it up, too. Well, you guys play the seriousness really well, and you have the lingo down. So I'm guessing you spend some time with state attorneys or assistant state attorneys. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we met, um, we met a retired state's attorney, uh, Justice Jack O'Malley, as well as an assistant state's attorney, uh, one of our first days that we got there. And they just, like, took us through kind of what it's like in the courtroom. Um, a really interesting thing about the courtroom is that it works, it operates a lot like a theater, you know? So uh, having to choose if you're going to walk on that certain point or stand still, like what's more empowering, what, what it, the jury is a bit like an audience, but it's also an audience that you have to like really persuade. So um, the stakes, in a lot of ways are higher because uh, you're dealing with people's lives, but, but it, it does operate a lot like a theater. Um, 
which was really cool to learn. And we, you know, can consult with them at any time and contact them with questions, you know, even simple things like, are the chairs here in the scene or are they not here? Because we're definitely, we never sit down or the chair, like just simple texts and then, you know. Do you see yourself like easy. rambling on in like state lingo and like law lingo when you're uh, oh my gosh. your pastime? Uh, no, <laughs> I, I wish I could say I knew, I understood more of it. Sometimes, um, uh, you know, there are certain things that I've learned that I've like used in, in conversation later. I'm like, oh, hi, I learned something. And early on, Michael Chinuchin was like, by the end of this season, you're going to, or by the end of this show or whatever he said, uh, uh, you're going to be well on your way to being a lawyer. And I was like, that's the far, I mean, lawyers have it much harder than we do. Not only do they have to go through law school and pass the bar and all that, but they have to like write their own material and then memorize it and perform it well. And like, again, they're dealing with people's lives. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I ha I've learned a ton. It's really interesting. Like, um, I learned that in Chicago, uh, if, uh, if you kill someone with a gun, it's an automatic 30 years, but if you kill someone with a knife, it's 15 because they're trying to, you know, limit gun use and crime and stuff like that. So make it's sure like, you do it with the knives, guys, right? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Put those guns away. Buy a knife. No, no, no. Don't do that. Don't do, do that. Do any of that. That's do not what we're do that. Advising. I don't know what the rule is in New York either, so, you know. <laughs> but you think you'd be able to, like, defend yourself in a courtroom? You're not, you're not saying that just yet. Oh, my gosh. No, no. Uh, hire a lawyer, too. That's also what I've, what I've learned, even though we're on the prosecution side of things. <laughs> Now, you had a, like, you know, I, one of the episodes that came up recently I really loved, and you guys actually found yourself on the other side of the grilling. You know, you were involved with uh, getting... Uh, oh, yes, know, yes, I was on the witness the tables stand. On you. you were on the witness Ooh, stand. So yeah. what was that experience like, you know, being on the other side of it? That, um, that witness stand is a real hot seat. And I had a feeling, but then when I was sitting there and looking at everybody watching me, it's, there's a lot of pressure. Um, the interesting about playing Anna on the witness stand, though, is that she's a lawyer. So they know exactly how to answer questions in a way that, you know, doesn't make them... They're, they, they're very, they have to be very clever about it, you know, but they also know how important it is not to make the jury feel like they're being too smart. I mean, that was... That was one of the harder things I've done as her because it was just like it's such a fine line and I haven't really had the opportunity to watch a a lawyer on the stand yeah. so I you know that was that was um that was definitely a challenge yeah yeah or to have like Philip give you that disapproving look like what oh, did I you get do those a lot, yeah. so <laughs> not from Philip Anna gets them from Stone I'll I'll, I'll put yeah. it that way yeah. I mean so do when you read the scripts are you you know how how are you feeling are you surprised are you excited do you guys call each other text each other about what's coming up um you know uh, yes actually we have we have done it I'm trying to think I know on Unreal we used to be like what oh my god but that's more like because like our characters you know you find out that someone like right. is going to get blown up or like you know I mean not to that extent but there are secrets flying, and then they come out, and it's like, did you know this was going to happen? You know, but for this show, it's more, you know, about the legalities. But we've had many a philosophical question about, you know, it's very interesting to get a script where, um, you know, a lot of times our characters may be saying something that we completely disagree with and, like, how we feel about that. And, and you know, it's not our time to... It's not our time to decide to be an activist sort of on the show. Like, there's certain things you can say as, like, the general story goes, but, um, but like, figuring out how to play that other side and, and uh, it, it is, is definitely a part of the process and discussing that with other people. And um, there are certain things that I've definitely changed my mind about, having, like, talked them out with the writers and stuff, like, about, you know human philosophy and stuff. So, I mean, it can, it can get really engaged and, and really interesting. It's fun. Do you ever suggest stories or cases to the writers or say that you heard something? I'm sure it's a pretty open forum, I'm guessing. Um, uh, yeah, it is. They're always willing to take uh, any suggestions. Um, uh, but not yet, you know. First season, I, they pretty much had everything ready to go, you know. Like, and I... Um, I haven't, I haven't brought anything to them in particular. We did talk about a, a bit about um, for a potential for next 
season, I, I probably can't say too much, um, with regards to like Hispanic immigration and my ancestors and, and things like that. Um, so we've opened up that dialogue to hopefully cover in the next season um, and just sort of the different perspectives on that. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, we, um, I mean, I, I am personally a vegetarian and they made my character a vegetarian. So that was kind of fun. Like there are things about us that like, that do end up informing the characters. Um, uh, so that's nice. It's personalized. That's amazing. I'm sure everyone's really excited to hopefully get that second season. I know I have a lot of friends who are fans of the show. Where do you guys, yeah, where do you guys want to see it go, you know, in the next couple? Oh man, I think, uh, at one point Dick Wolf, uh, patted, uh, Pat fell on the shoulder and said, 17 years or something like that. And we were like, whoa. <laughs> and then he was like calculating like how old his daughter would be when that, like at that, if in 17 years. And, and you know, we just like had this sort of like, it was one of our first days too. We were like, oh my gosh. Um, which, you know, Dick Wolf is, is uh, probably right. He's yeah. very good at what he does. Um, uh, but yeah, we just hope for, you know, I, I, there are so many beyond the cast, there are so many phenomenal people in the crew and so many hard workers in Chicago, and it's great for that city to have productions coming into town um, because there are so many actors there who are doing the theater circuit and aren't necessarily getting TV opportunities until these kinds of projects come into town. Um, so for so many people, I really do hope it, it goes for as many years as possible. Well, I do too. Um, there's some questions here in the audience, so we're going to start right here. Hey, um, you had mentioned improv, watching your friends do improv, and I want to yeah. know if you have taken classes or if you think attorneys should take classes. Oh, if attorneys should take classes. Are you a law student? Yes. Oh, wow. Wow. Um, honestly, I think everybody should take improv. Um, I have taken improv classes at, um, at UCB in L.A., um, I wish I could say I've done, you know, more than that or more years of it. Um, I started my own indie team and stuff and it's a, it's a really fun experience just like for laughs and to like let loose. And, um, it's also a really great learning experience in terms of the way you learn things about yourself and the way you communicate. Um, and also how well you listen and things like that. Um, I think we improvise in our lives like crazy and to be able to not just like to be able to be funny with it, but also to be, to just be comfortable to be yourself or even like take on a different character and a different perspective. I think that's beneficial to everyone in their lives. Yeah, yeah, yeah you question. should. It's like, it's just a really fun, it, it, you do it. It's good. <laughs> and the next question is over there. Hey, Monica. Hi. So since you've been able to be on both a cable show and a network show, was there any difference as far as development with, uh, you know, with how the show works? Um, you know, since I've only done two, I'm not sure I have the best, like, sample size to tell you, like, the main differences. Um, only as, I, I mean, it, the, like, the rules on swearing and, and skin exposure are, are, like, very different. That was kind of the first thing for me um, to, to realize, but... Uh, I can't, I, you know, I don't know that I can say much more than that. I wish I could as a producer or something. Absolutely. Well, there's one last question right there. Hi, thank you so much for being here. Yeah. Um, I know you said you really love crime and law shows. Yeah. Are there any other shows that you watch to gain inspiration for this character? I mean, I, I really enjoyed... Like I said, Law and Order. I was also a big fan of The Good Wife. Um, I don't know if that's somehow in competition with our show. It's a very different show, so I wouldn't. There's room it. for both. There's room. So for I wouldn't both. think they're of both great yeah, shows. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're just totally different shows. Um, but I really enjoyed. I really enjoyed watching The Good Wife. Um, um, but my favorite thing about legal shows comes down to that sort of question of right and wrong and the gray area and. Um, and, and human philosophy, I guess, in a sense, um, you know, in a very digestible sense. I'm not, you know, reading like 800 page books about philosophy, but, but it's nice to sort of question something that, that you think of regularly. Um, as far as inspiration for the character, um, 
I have, I do have some some sort of feisty people in my life that uh, that I like to say that I um, take after for her, and not just feisty, but really grounded. Um, she's kind of, I try to play her as kind of the person I I wish I could be sometimes because she is so grounded and intelligent and sticks up for herself and and um, and I think I could take a lesson. <laughs> from that so um so yeah nice well guys absolutely ch check out uh chicago justice on nbc catch up with all the old episodes and one more round of applause for monica guys thank yeah. you so much for having me